Hi boys and girls, welcome to Storytime with Pastor Steve. Today's story comes from my big book of Bible stories. Hi boys and girls, today's story is the prodigal son, taken from Luke chapter 15 verses 11 through 32. Are you ready? I have a strange tale I've been meaning to tell about a young fellow I know fairly well. And so, if you got a spare minute or two, I'd be ever so happy to tell it to you. How strange could it be? Oh, come on, you know me. It's as strange as a tell could impossibly be. Hey, Pop, I exploded. Wake up and get dressed. I've got a few things to get off of my chest. I've had all I can stand. I can't stand anymore. This place is the pits. It's a snooze. It's a bore. I'm a getting on out while the getting is good. And I'm not looking back till I reach Hollywood. And oh yes, by the way, if you do me one favor, it really would be a tremendous time saver. All that money you said that I'd get you know when, well, I want it right now, so go get it, amen? Well, to my great surprise, he forked over the loot, and he did it without a bark, a peep, or a hoot. So I packed up my bags, and I ran for the hills. I ran for the fun, and the sun, and the thrills. I did my own thing. Man, I had it my way. It was wall to wall, nonstop, just do it. Hooray? It was wild. It was great. It was way cool, far out. Right on up to the point where the money ran out. Well, I got pretty hungry. I needed some food. So I got me a job with a farmer type dude who said, I've got the thing for you here, Mr. Big. You'll be feeding this awful green stuff to my pig. To your pig, I inquired. That's why you were hired. So do it right now, he upheaved, or you're fired. So what's the big deal? Just go give him some chow? Well, that's easy for you to say, isn't it now? This pig was no teeny pink pork and bean weenie. This pig was a curly-tailed, wild-eyed meanie. A big, bad, Tasmanian, pot-bellied so. A thousand-pound, honey-glazed ham hock and how. So feed him I did, every night and each day. I'd kerplop that green glop, and he chomped it away. And I knew if I didn't eat something real soon, I'd be in there myself with a fork and a spoon. My stomach was empty. My clothes were a mess. Oh, why did I do what I did, I confessed. I'm sure that my father won't take me back now. I just can't see why. No, I just can't see how. I don't want my room or my robes or my rings. No, I can't ask for any of those things. I'm no longer worthy of being his son. Oh, why did I do it? Oh, why did I run? I'll ask for a job, just a job, nothing more. I'll clean out the stable, I'll polish the floor. I'll take out the trash, yes, I'll even do that. I'll live out back on the porch with the cat. That ought to do it, yes, that's what I'll say. Then maybe he'll think about letting me stay. So I packed up my bags and I ran from the hills, but the thing I saw next really gave me the chills. And the thing that I saw was that father of mine. He was waiting right there for me all of the time. My son has come home. There were tears in his eyes. Well, I have to admit, that was quite a surprise. Kill our best calf. Make a feast fit for kings. Go and get my best robe, my best shoes, my best ring. Everyone! Quickly, gather around. Oh, my son who was lost, my dear son, 
He is found. While I learned something then on that day in that place, yes, I learned of my Father's great love and His grace. And I learned that it's not just what you do or you've done, but I learned that it's Jesus, God's only Son, who's the one and only one way to be free. He will take you back too. Go on, ask Him. You'll see.